Welcome to the Curious About Nature podcast. This is a podcast for folks who want to connect with nature and rewild childhood. Hosted by Rachel Mills, Buttercup Learning's founder, an educator with 20 plus years of experience with a passion for animation, the natural world and conservation. Rachel focuses on getting digital kids outdoors and having fun in nature promoting well-being and a can-do attitude to local wildlife conservation and sustainable living. Join her and her guests for their stories, experiences and tips to support outdoor learning and nature connection. Welcome to the Nature Curious podcast. This month I'm joined once again by Ian Stevens, a lawn care expert and lover of nature. Hi there, Ian. Yeah. Hi, Rachel. Good, good to see you again. How are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. What's interesting is that last time we talked about getting outdoors, didn't we, and, and nature, and you said to me that you were going to publish your book, which is called uh, My Year in Photos, a 365-day nature-inspired photo diary, and you've done that. <laughs> yeah, we've done that. Do, do, do you want an early plug? There, there we go. There, there we go. Super brilliant. Evidence of said book. But <laughs> it's still a bit weird, though, like published author, and it's all a bit strange, but I, I know at the time I, I was going to be doing it, and I had this idea. My wife thought it was going to be an online version, but I just thought, no, I'm going to do it. Let's go for it. And in the end, it's turned into this sort of thing that it, it's totally not for profit. I'm not taking any penny out of it at all. I work's paying for the publishing costs and the cost of the books, and then every penny we get from the sales, we're putting straight into things. So I think cost-wise, we're on about £1,800 or something now because we're on an ebook version. Yeah. And I think I've got about seventeen, eighteen hundred pounds in cash sales as well. That's so we're doing brilliant. really well on that. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you how many books you'd actually sold, sold, but I know that the profits from the sale of books you're donating to two charities, yeah. isn't it? Which is yeah, yeah, we're Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust because obviously we're we're really into our wildlife conservation. We support them through work and just want to continue that. And then also we've got hospice in our hometown, Bassett Hospice, and it's just love supporting hospices where we can. But I just thought if we can do a bit extra with the book, it's only a bit, but if everyone does a little bit, it all helps. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that Green Cat Books, your book publisher, is also restoring, isn't it? One meter squared of British wildlife wetlands and wildflowers yeah. for every five ebooks that are sold via their website. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. They're all of these things that are benefiting from your nature photography. Yeah. So there's, obviously they're trying to do that as well. So they're doing that with every ebook they sell. I said to them, like for every five we sell, if you do a metre, we'll match it for a metre. We've done it the same with their physical books as well because they, I can't remember if it's five or ten trees they're planting for each number of books we sell. So I said, in that case, we'll just match plays of that as well. So whatever they're doing, we're doing as well. So yeah, and yeah. it's all benefiting nature and environment. Yeah, yeah, everyone's benefiting from wildlife trust to hospices and yeah, and build, building that again. Where's this connection to nature come from then, Ian? Oh, blimey, it goes all the way, way back to probably when I was, before I could probably remember, because we were only five, ten minutes from the countryside at home. We we're always going out and about for walks. And I've probably said this a few times on other things, but my mum and dad would have told us about things, mainly my dad, because mum likes wildlife, but dad's the real one. But it's just doing stuff. We're always out there, me and my sister. And you just end up picking up. It just goes ingrained through you. And you, it just becomes this thing that you just enjoy nature. So it doesn't become a chore. You, you've always been brought up with it. So it's just something that you do. Yeah. yeah. And it, you've been doing the Nature Photography Challenge for over two years now. How how did you get started on it? It was a, a friend said to me on Facebook, do you fancy doing the challenge? And I just said, no, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and then we, we got to the end of our 30 days wild in 22. And I thought, do you know what? Let's try and do something, take a photo. And I was just going to do a photo a day, put it on Facebook. And then it got a bit worse. And you know me from Twitter and what I do. And my puns were just absolutely excruciating. And my, so much so that my dad said to me, you're not putting those in the book, are you? And I said, yes, because it's the only reason why I'm writing the book. And, and it just carried on. But I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to keep on doing it. I quite enjoy doing it to start with. And then we got towards the end of the first year and I thought, oh, actually, I might write a book because the cover photo for the book, that went onto canvas for a cousin of mine because she said that photo looks nice. So I sent it off and I thought, oh, actually, that's sparked a bit of an idea. I can do something. 
And then I got to the end of the first year and I just thought, well, I can't stop now because people enjoy it. So I kept on going. And then there was probably three quarters through the second year and everyone said, you are doing another book, aren't you? <laughs> I'm now planning <laughs> book two. It's still going to be fairly boring on nature and everything, but people enjoy it. So I just keep on doing it. Yeah. yeah. So when, when do you think book two will be published? Oh, Green Cat told me I've got, I've been given a sort of deadline around about October. I've got to get stuff to her because right. there's a big event that we all go to. There's like a Theo Fetus group that I see you're in, I'm in, and there's an event in February. So if I can get it sorted out before then, I can take some copies and do some hard selling on the day with a bit of like, I do some signed copies while I'm there. So hopefully, because uh, last time it was beginning of March, but I want to try and get it a bit before that. Yeah. With a bit of luck. Yeah. But we'll see how it goes. There's no deadline as such when it comes out. So I'm not pressurising myself. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. You mentioned about the the sort of titles for each of the photographs, especially on Twitter. What's the silliest or your favourite maybe amongst the titles that you've come up with? We went out on Christmas Day. And again, I'm always looking out for things. And even my wife will say, that'll make a good photo for you. But we were trundling along and we just saw it was a, a little bit of a moss on some rocks. So I took a photo and it's Christmas Day and I just thought it's quite nice. And then because my brain's wide a bit funny now because i've been doing this for so long i just did a bit of a happy chris moss everyone <laughs> so so that was a little bit awful but it, it, it's tricky because there's no end of badly worded things in there and i'm often get told about them uh, yeah, but it, it's all part of the fun yeah, yeah they, they very much remind me of your traditional dad joke or pun <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> what would you say is the maybe the craziest named wildlife you've captured this is some great names for our um, natural oh. plants and animals, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, again, fairly recently, and I might have done it in my first book, I'm not sure, but no, I didn't do it in the first book, but it was, it was vomit fungus. Uh, and it's just this bright yellow thing. And again, we were, we were doing a walk the other week, we saw it, and it was this bit that was stuck in the woods, and we just thought, oh, what's that? And then I had to dive under the undergrowth a little bit, got a photo, but the thing itself was probably only about that big but we've seen that quite a lot and there's a few walks where we know it's around and we always have a bit of a nose around and yeah. i think there was a cauliflower fungus on a tree the other week as well or m months now as it's towards the end of winter so yeah. there's, there's all sorts of things <laughs> if you're not sure of what you're looking at maybe you, you haven't identified it do you use any books or apps or online sort of tools uh, to help you uh, i'm afraid i'm really cheating now because it's all on the phone so yeah. I just take a photo. If we're not sure, mm. just take a photo. And we're, we're on Android. So yeah. take a photo, Google Lens, press that, and it comes up with it. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's accurate. But again, the other week, working with a customer, and they've got a canal, one of these narrowboat canals, proper one, back of them. And there was this fish, I wasn't quite sure what it was. Fishes aren't my thing. It's with pike. I know what it is. But I took a photo of this other one. I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. And it, it, I think in the end, someone said it was a chub or a something. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, the, the Google Lens version was a beluga whale. <laughs> so, I thought that, so I thought that was rather good. Chesterfield Canal in the landlocked Nottinghamshire. And we had a beluga whale. But I, I did report it to the, the Wildlife Trust. But they did say that wasn't actually a, a good enough one to correct. So that, that was the most dodgy, incorrect one that I've had. Yeah. Which is a bit weird. <laughs> yeah I, I guess that's the great thing isn't it about the internet and sharing on social media is that there might be some expo steps up and says yeah don't think that's quite true <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, i think that's the great thing isn't it because a lot of people may might be not so keen on taking photography pictures maybe because they're a bit hesitant thinking oh, i'm i'm not an artist or anything and you know i think just capturing them the wildlife is part of the, the the fun of it isn't it it's not necessarily oh. making a beautiful nature art portrait or something oh absolutely and even if you've not done it before oh, what i would say if you're keen to do something if hopefully this might inspire you to go oh do you know what i'm going to go out and start, not necessarily every day but just start doing yeah. a little bit a bit more often you've not done photographing of anything before but don't go out and go i've got my phone i'm going to take a photo of something flying over or it's bird sat in the bush over there or an animal walking through the field find a flower or some something small that's not going to be moving around so you can practice taking photos of it and if you do find small bugs and things mm. try and be obviously aware of them as well so you're not getting right in their faces and without saying them because if they start walking off and flying away don't chase the thing all around the countryside because 
you're going to be stressing that animal out. So, so just start small, nice and simple, and then just gradually build up to things. And also, then if you take a photo of a, a flower, you'll get back and you go, Do you know what? There was a beetle in there or a fly. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was there. So you end up with all sorts of photo bombing that you didn't realise was happening. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the project was kind of, was initially inspired through 30 Days Wild and that got like exploring, mm. seeing things. Do you do you still get involved in 30 Days Wild and what they do? Uh, I, I do 30 Days Wild. I, I don't do really active projects. So obviously there's lots of build things or make things or whatever, but my sort of involvement and participation of it is really similar to what I'm doing with the photos and the book. Just to say to people, look, just try doing stuff. This year, I was doing a species list for my garden, just mm -hmm. like birds and some animals. And I've got up to 20 or so species, but I've done it before where I've gone through the garden, tried to find something beginning with each letter of the alphabet, which worked most of it apart from Z and X, which I, I stumbled across a little bit. But each time I'll probably do a thing where I might schedule a post every day and say, look, you can go and visit a reserve. And I might just go through the UK map of wildlife trust reserve and say, try this one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you got some favourite photos that you've taken that you're oh, really proud I, of or just have a I, great story? I have. So, there you go. I, I, shall do, I, I don't know. How, I, I'll try and find the words. So so, so there's a bluebell. That one's a morel mushroom. That was in a customer's garden. I pointed it out to him. Didn't have a clue what it was, but I just obviously just really like it because of the shape of it. And these are the things I find when working in the garden. That's the cover of my book. And that was the council inspired picture that made me think I'm going to write the book and that's May 27th I'm going to know that day for ever and day now this one is in the peak district and we just absolutely love that obviously it's, all the trees are coming out and this row one's coming into leaf it's almost as if it's protect or the leaves that have already come out are hugging and protecting the other ones that are coming out so we just read that one that's that wasp I was saying about and so it's just fairly sharp for some reason I don't know how I managed to get it like that it wasn't having a go at me that one we really like the beech leaf but again, you can just see the theory of the bits on the edge of it, which you wouldn't necessarily know about. You just look at a tree and go, oh, it's leaves. But once you get right in there, and it was great because we had uh, raindrops on there as well. And that was a find at the beginning of April, long tail tits nest. And about two months later, it was still there. And they're amazing long tail tits nest, if you know all that, because they make them out of cobwebs and lichen and things. So as the nest grows, it expands to accommodate the young. Do you have any sort of favourite plants, flowers that are going to be sprouting in spring or blooming in spring or sprouting? <laughs> the spring ones, I suppose we've got the bluebells, but we love seeing orchids. Uh, yeah. So that, that's more of a later sort of spring. But it, it's, I think it's just all the primroses and the cowslips and even violets. It, there's just every time one, you just know you're just getting that little bit further through spring. So again, it's difficult to list the favourite, but there's always the ones that you end up looking out for and it's always good to see. I'm curious as well about what you've learnt about nature or the seasons by taking these photos every day. Is there new knowledge about nature that you've gathered or about the way that we live with seasons or not? Yeah, I think the seasons are definitely changing. So me sounding like I'm an old codger now and in the old days it used to be like this, but I think we definitely had a, this was spring, then went into summer, then you had a bit of an autumn, then you had winter and then it went into spring. Whereas now it all just merges and it, it hasn't got those definite breaks in between. But nature-wise, I, I think it, it's pretty good stuff. I know it gets a good old bashing from us, but if you give it a chance, nature will just come on and just grow anywhere and it will live all sorts of places. You, you look at, I know, urban foxes or birds and I know people don't like seagulls eating your chips on the seaside, but they'll do what they do when they've adapted to do things. And the same with plants. They'll live anywhere. They'll do all sorts of things. Butterflies in your garden. Birds live in your houses. And we've got mason bee nests outside of our office. So you put them up and we just have to put a new nest up over here because they just keep on coming. So, yeah. um, but if you give nature a chance, it will come and find you and then obviously you're getting lots out of nature because you're getting enjoyment. That brings... So I, I don't like preaching the message, but actually, if you look after nature more, we do an awful lot better.
Yeah. yeah. I recently did a, a, a after school club session at my daughter's school. They have a green club. So they do a lot of nature and exploring, a bit of forest school type activity. And we made um, hedgehog footprint tunnels out of carbon oh, yeah. and yeah. then uh, cooking grade charcoal and vegetable oil so that you could capture their footprints. Oh, okay. Mm. I noticed that half of the group, half the class loved the activity and the other half just wanted to get outside and play, which is great because <laughs> yeah. outside play. Yeah, outside the classroom, yeah. Um, so we took a beetle sheet out and we did uh, lots of IDing of beetles and that was really good as well. What we obviously also learned from that was that it was mating season for lots of these beetles. Uh, so they obviously were learning a little bit about the birds and bees kind of fact. Yeah. They were really good at identifying them off the sheet. And I thought this was just really good exercise mm. for those kids that maybe didn't want to do the more kind of applied stuff. It's just mm. like you said, get out there and look. One of the things I love doing with my daughter is uh, she's got a rather than a mobile phone. She's too young for that kind of thing. We've got an old digital camera that was like mm. early 90s. Uh, it still works. Yeah. It's her camera. And she loves like taking patterns in nature and looking for different textures and so on. And that mm. beach is really great for that. Hopefully, um, Ian, you're going to inspire a whole generation of other families to get out there and uh, either do nature photography together or maybe even inspire some young teen to to use their mobile phone in a slightly different way. Yeah, yeah and it, it's either the, the nature photography or even if it's just, I don't necessarily want to do the photography or I'm not really into that at the moment, but I still quite like the idea of getting out there. Yeah. You don't have to take photographs of all the things when you're out and about. Uh, but also even on holiday, just actually I'll use the phone in a slightly different way. It was our previous dog. We went to the lakes in, I think it was October 21, some, something like that. And it was at an age where we couldn't do a long walk together. So I think one, one afternoon, my wife went for a walk that way from where the cottage we were staying. And I went that way after she'd come back and it was towards the end of the day and I was going up a bit of a it's not a hill it's a craggy bit never, we'd never been out there before and I was just took I took loads of photos as I was going up this thing just so it was like when I got back so she could look at it as a like a, a like me going through the walk and I just took this one particular where you know with photograph and there's like the rule of thirds or something where it's all broken down I took this one particular photo and then I showed it to my mum because they like lakes just trip and she wanted it put onto a a picture and it's just the way it was took and I just literally just gone off and went, Oh yeah, photo stink. Took a thing on the well, not like on the camera, but so I took, took the photo, didn't even think about it, but actually that's one of the best photos I've probably taken because just the way it's broken the sky and some it was like a slate mine coming through and the strata of the, the hills and the greenery and the brown and the blue. But but, but that's probably a subconscious I'll take it and thought, Oh, that'd be looking quite nice. Mm. And you say you just you just develop things and just get out there. That's that's all I yeah. It's it's a boring old message I keep on saying all the time, but you just there's more outside than there is inside, so just get out Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was just yeah. gonna maybe finish off with do you have any kind of like cheeky animal stories of animals that you interacted with maybe when you were taking some of your photographs? Yeah. Uh, I've, I've got one that, that was in there and that was a bit of a naughty there were there were two goats in a there's a, a one of these fruit farms that we go to and I visited them to pick up some strawberries and then there was these two um, big goats in the the field and they noticed they were putting some stuff down off an ash tree so I was a bit naughty on that so I pulled off a bit of a branch of a leaf and then I was then holding that and then took a photo while I was feeding the goats that's probably the the cheekiest one but we still got it where we sit down for drinks and we've got the you know you sit for a drink somewhere and you've got the robins and maybe so We'll often have them sitting there, so we'll try and perch something so you can try and get the the photo of that. Mm. But yeah. but but the the, the trouble is if you're trying to get an animal to do something because if it's always done whatever it, you, you can see it's doing the same habit, it keeps on doing that. But as soon as you get the phone out to do it, it just yeah. won't it won't play ball, will it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so, you, you it might there's something really quite spectacular that's mating or something, and then turn around, see you, and fly off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes if you are too focused on your photography part of it, that's a bit like when you go to the, and we don't do it, but when you go to the concerts and you see everyone that's yeah. on their phones up, but, but you're, you're looking through the screen, but you're not actually looking at the main experience. Because uh, with our dog we've got now, we can't do up to the East Coast because you know where the puffins are up on mm. Yorkshire, where the puffins and the gannets and everything. 
you, you start looking through your phone too much on that and you just lose that bigger picture as to what it's all about. Uh, so you, it's good to have something in a little screen on your phone or your camera, but still don't forget you've got that whole, which, which is why I sometimes try and take photos of big scenes, not just small close up because mm. yeah, big stuff, small things, it, it's all equally impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So if any viewers and listeners are interested in purchasing either the e-version or the printed version of your book, what's the web URL or what would they say? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what the web URL is, but if you go to Green Cat Books, Great. Green Cat Books, Ian Stevens, I've got an author's page, which seems a bit bizarre. So go on to there. The physical book is £20 and the e-book is £10. So if you're interested. Yeah, and great. remember, all profits of the sale of the books are being donated to the hospice and the Wildlife Trust. Yeah, we're going to worthy cause. If people want to follow you on Twitter, what's your handle if they're interested in seeing what you're developing, what photographs you're taking at the moment, and, and engage with that? Yeah, on Twitter, I'm Lawnmaster Nuts, N O T S. And I'm on Facebook, which is my sort of homepage on their posting too. And I'm starting to now. Do it on to Instagram, which is in Stevens, so you just have to search for that. And I've now gone on to LinkedIn as well. Thank you so much for joining me again. It's been a real pleasure. Oh, well, cheers for inviting us, and we'll talk to you when the second one comes out. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, that. Rachel. Thank cheers. you so much. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Curious About Nature. If you would like to keep getting nature and outdoor learning stories and tips, hit subscribe on the podcast so you never miss an episode. Don't forget to give a five-star rating and review to support our podcast reach. To deepen your child's connection with nature and natural world education, please check out the Nature Curious subscription box. Head over to the website buttercuplearning.com to further support your family's nature journey.